So the next question is, veganism, the case against animal suffering and that for widespread immediate environmental action are things that make perfect moral sense, but which somehow still aren't enough to make individuals change their behavior, despite their understanding of the issue. Why do you think this is? I think because human beings are capable of, of reaching depths of evil that, that, that should terrify every one of you. I, I think that the terrifying thing about evil is its banality, um, famously. I think the the difficulty that we face as as moral beings is to recognize what we're truly capable of, and, and it should and it should scare you if you haven't had enough time thinking about like what your what the kinds of evil that you would be capable of given certain circumstances. I think you should give it some time. Um, I've said this on on because I've been asked questions to a similar effect, and one of the ways I found to explain this point is to reference a talk that I went to at the O2 Arena. One of the last questions they asked was, what, what's something you hate? And I think it was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek question. It was like, you know, people like to end on a light note, but this will be fine. Like, yeah, t t tell me something you hate. Peterson kind of sat there and thought about it for like three minutes. He just, he just sat there and just thought. And the answer he came out with was he said, I, I, the thing I most hate is that part of me that would be content as an Auschwitz prison guard. I was kind of taken aback in my chair. I was like, what, what on earth? Like, and then it, it kind of hit me as this incredibly powerful thing that he'd said, basically recognizing that like, that's, that's in him, right? That if he'd have been in that person's shoes, he'd have been committing that person's actions. At, at a separate um, talk that Peterson gave, he, he talks about this in, in more depth and he recommends the book Ordinary Men by Christopher Browning which I would also recommend which is an analysis of the prison guards of Auschwitz and basically concludes that these were ordinary men right these were just guys who you know they they liked classical music they didn't eat their greens they cut the crust off their sandwiches they had a family to go home to they were just like normal people but they were also participating in a horrendous evil and i think that taking some time to explore that makes you recognize that human beings are such impressionable creatures if we're in a situation in the society that normalizes it it's it's unbelievably terrifying the level of evil to which we're capable individually and societally of sinking and it's and it's it's a shame to have to be reminded of it but i think that the exact same thing is going on when people just just continue to live in a way that they that e e that they even recognize as, as as being immoral i mean that's why i think it happened the, the question you know you might be wondering what, what to do about that but that you know that, that's a separate question so the question of like why is this the case why is it the case that people just aren't willing to do it i think because because of the fact that human beings by you know, the, the price we pay for being capable of great morality and great pride in our species is the ability to also commit great evil. Um, as C.S. Lewis has, has pointed out, you know, you can't really have a conception of good without having a conception of evil. You can't call a line crooked if you don't have an idea of straight, right? It's like, if we want to be able to be a, to be a, a species that can have moral obligations and moral virtues and do great things and wonderful things and have pleasures and goodness, the price we pay is also being capable of the exact opposite, and that is demonstrated nowhere better, currently speaking, like in, in the world today, than in our treatment of the most innocent members uh, of, of our moral community that we share the planet with.